Winston. It's Peter. always uh, wonderful to have applause before you start your speech. <laughs> this is the Prime Minister's statement put out today and reads nothing like uh, the pathetic speech that he made as the Prime Minister. Very embarrassing in the extreme. In this document, he says this, that the government, quotes, is taking the public with us by clearly outlining our actions and policy priorities, end of quotes. <laughs> is there any New Zealander, including the backbench of the National Party, who remotely thinks that that is true? Yeah. Not a mutter, not a murmur, <laughs> no confirmation at all, because they know it's false. Demonstrably false. Look, he's taking us down the road to low wages against leading economies. Down the garden. No, it's not rubbish. Rubbish is your specialty. These are the facts. <laughs> taking us down the garden path over outlandish claims about the TPPA. All sorts of claims. The Prime Minister said it was going to be worth $5 billion by 2025. Who in trade and foreign affairs are saying that now? No. Oh no, it's 2.7 billion, almost half when? Five years later. Yes. Sometime never. But of course, that doesn't concern people like Mr. Goldsmith, because just getting a ministerial car is all he's ever wanted to be. <laughs> just to be able to call himself somebody. And of course, if you've got that sort of character, you really starve for recognition. In fact, it's a burning hunger which compels you what to do what? To never stand up for the people who voted for you in the first place. And that's a condition so bereft in the National Party backbench today. You've got all sorts of members here from the regions, from the provinces, from zombie towns. No infrastructural investment, no, no. It's all going to Auckland. Oh, so Taranaki got a farm. Taranaki got a road. That's all. Just got that. But what about the economy in the Taranaki and around New Zealand? Or for that matter, Northland. Or for that matter, Northland. Down the pathway towards police numbers going down, not up. And crime in this... Oh, yes, they are. And more importantly, somebody very close to you, Minister, knows it. So don't stand in this house when I know who that expert is. He is very close to you. He understands the regional police numbers. Minister, you don't, and never will. Well, you know, you ask him what I'm talking about. I don't want to get sort of uh, too close to the family here, but those are the facts. And here we go, down the pathway to no growth after the Christchurch earthquake and massive consumptive immigration. Now, I'm, green, I'm, I'm glad the Greens mentioned that, because, you know, when I used to, and my colleagues used to talk about immigration and its massive cost if it's not focused, we used to get accused of being racist or xenophobic. And it's great, you know, never, sometimes uh, better late than never. But the costs have been huge. And then, of course, it's down the pathway to separatism that this National Party has taken us. Remember the slogan, Kiwi, not Iwi? Oh, yes, Heki Parata, oh, and all those ones over the back there, all looking down now, all with their knees knocking. They all went along with that campaign, and when they got in, what did they do? Threw it in the rubbish bin and pulled out their separatist pathway down which they're now taking us. Look at the Resource Management Act. The Resource Management Act has meant to be an act that is going to change the economic future of this country. Everybody knows it's necessary. But what did National promise in 2013? And what are they delivering now? Well, go and ask the Maori Party because they want Iwi to own the water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Now, the Minister for Maori Affairs says not all of it. Well, Minister, we thought that the water belonged to everybody, European and Maori, whoever's here, whatever their background. Be that person Korean, Chinese, Indian, living here legally, the water would belong to all of us. But oh, here we go, straight down the pathway to separatism. And there's no, look, there's no use shouting out like that. Because 
First of all, it bespeaks a bad education and a lack of really with the English language. There's no use screaming out like that. The National Party is down, the, down there, and they've had a deal with the Māori Party, and if you go on the website, you'll see all sorts of iwis saying, all sorts of iwis saying what's going to happen. Now, I want to say this. One party's going to stand in the way of that nonsense, and that party's New Zealand first. Yeah, right. We've been prepared to deal with any political party if they're talking common sense. And we say to the National Party, it's high time they stop going down this pathway of division and dissension based on race and started to plan, and no, no, forget about Marama Fox. Marama Fox, of course, is one of these people, been here five minutes, but in that short, truncated time, has become what? An expert on everything. <laughs> An expert on everything. No problem, be it legal, constitutional, environmental, geological, spiritual, Marama is an expert on everything. Oh, I wish, I wish we all, I wish that we in Maritim all had a mother like that because our economic and social demise would have stopped a long, long time ago. <laughs> a long, long time ago. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, I know you're old enough to look like my, I know you're old enough to look like my auntie, but you're not. <laughs> you know, what did John Key promise? When he first became the Prime Minister, he said that he would promise and deliver the brighter future. Remember that? It seems so long. To who? To who? Very good question. To who? To who? And in which country? Yeah. To who or whom? And in which country? And when? He surely did not mean his backbench or his cabinet colleagues or, for that matter, the Minister of Immigration or whatever other job he can't do properly. <laughs> he promised a brighter future. Well, what's happened? Well, debt has increased massively. Debt is something you have to pay off. Every home knows that. And has the economy been growing? No, it has not. Apart from Christchurch and massive consumption from immigration, it is static. Even New Zealand First and the Greens agree on that because they've come around to seeing the wisdom of our economic analysis. That's right. It took a while. <laughs> it took a while. He said he would close the gap with Australia by 2025. Nine years to go and he's not making a word, saying a word about it. And then, of course, he talked about police numbers and law and order. He got a minister of police who doesn't know what's going on. His brother does, of course, but he doesn't. Won't listen to his brother. Just goes on thinking he knows everything like so many people over there. And the rest is history. Sometimes in provincial New Zealand towns, in provincial New Zealand towns like... Moriweka and Kaitaia over the weekend, just nobody available at all. Disgraceful. No one available at all. And then, of course, he, get on, he got onto the TPPA. Now, if the TPPA was so good for New Zealanders, and if there had been so much discussion as he claimed with Māori, how come 99.9% .9 of Māori don't know about it? If there's been so much consultation, oh, did he mean with Marama? Oh, no, because Marama, Marama claims to know nothing about it, which would be the first thing and only thing she knows nothing about. And her colleague and cousin, apparently Heki Aparata, knows all about it. Oh, she does. Just like the Whangaruru, just like the school up in Whangaruru. I knew a lot about that. Now, tell me this. How much was spent up there? One, no, no, not 1.8, about 4.4 when it's all over. And who owns the farm? Now that this experiment has gone belly up, who owns the farm that the minister gave those people up there? And I can tell you this, whether it be South Canterbury Finance or that deal up, uh, that deal up there in Whangaru now collapsed, I can tell you, you've got to be a commercial, commercial illiterate, incompetent to give people a farm and when, their, and when their arrangement doesn't stack up, no shouting out. Look, no. <laughs> uh, look, Mr. Speaker, if the minister is negotiating to get the farm back, then she most definitely gave them the farm. Gave them the farm. For otherwise, what would the negotiations be about? Now, what sort of incompetent government 
give South Canterbury an uncapped guarantee so it blows, blows out $800 million, or gives a group of Maori with no record education a school and a farm to go with it, and when it goes belly up, they own the farm. Just disgraceful. Has he given the time yet? No? I thought you were making a sign, sir. I just want to make sure it wasn't true. <laughs> sir, all over the Western world and the United States and elsewhere, experts are saying what's wrong with the TPPA. They're in the Republican Party, then the Democrat Party, but of course the National Party are so struck with the latent genius that they know more than everybody in Congress. They've gone out and said last week that we've got a deal. Demonstrably, we have not. And if anything has changed in Congress, which it will be if they go ahead with it, oh, forget about Ann Tolly. What does she know about anything? <laughs> this is the Minister of Education who said her qualification was that she had two children. Well, on that basis, there's got to be 500,000 women in this country who are capable of doing that job. Back to my point. You've got a Congress that is seriously doubtful of its benefits for them. Then you've got massive Japanese subsidies, massive subsidies in Canada, and massive subsidies in the EU with whom they want a trade deal shortly. Tell me, what is the benefit of that? And as the farmers of this world find out in New Zealand just how bad this National Party is, there's going to be a voting shift. And there already has been in the North. Come along to the Dargville Field Days on the 3rd, the 4th and the 5th. Come up there, the National Party, and start flying your flag and explain to them what happened to the four huge promises in the by-election. Which flag? Good point. Yeah, which one? Yeah. Well, I, I suggest the white feather. <laughs> the, one, the one the Prime Minister wore to the trade deal. With the ISIS but come up and talk about the ten bridges they were promised in the by-election. Where's the money for seven of them? What happened to the super highway from Wellsford down to Walkworth and to Puhoy, which has not even started yet? What happened to this big promise Stephen Joyce and all of his colleagues, including the very innocent, naive Mr. Bishop made when he turned up? But it seems when it comes to the naivety shower, the National Party wants all the water. He went up there and promised that they were going to get 10 bridges and a super highway all the way to Wellsford. Any engineering reports so far? Any in the Northland plan last, announced last week of the 58 things that were given up in Northland, which Mr. Reddy was up there to applaud and acclaim? Which one included the 10 bridges? Which one included the super fast highway all the way to Wellsford? What about the, the government's taxpayer subsidised cell phone coverage, cell tower coverage, also promised by his national colleagues in the Northern by-election. Well, not a word. Like, not a word. And no wonder, Mr. No wonder the Prime Minister got confused. He got confused when he mentioned the man who gave that speech, knowingly, the man who's a political Samson without hair, <laughs> Stephen Joyce, round and round the country regurgitating rubbish, thinking that a whole lot of words goes a long way, but everybody up north is rubbing their chin and saying, but what did you promise in the by-election? And here's the rub. At the meeting, Stephen Joyce was asked by the member for Northland one fundamental question. Mr Joyce, is there going to be a monetary and fiscal policy change in Wellington to back up your 58-point plan? Answer? Have a guess. No. no. All window dressing. For whatever happened to Northland is not going to stop there. It'll be going to Whangarei, as we all know. Because in Whangarei, they don't like being called zombie town. And the Gisbournes. And the Wanganui's. And elsewhere around the... Who call them that? The leading economist the National Party keeps on quoting. That's right. Oh, yes, they do. And fancy, fancy them being so out of touch. Oh, I know. I know the member for the ACT Party's fallen in love recently. That was his last big item. <laughs> you know... I, I always find it really amazing how politics has changed. This is the party of big money. Usually big money has two things that go with, goes with it. A sense of class. A bit of reserve. Sort of natural reticence. But no, just like uh, the member from out that way who was just to be the Minister of Justice in the National Party, appearing in women's magazines, 
No, the biggest feature item of his political achievement lately was that he fell in love. Now, with the greatest respect, the greatest respect to the ACT Party member, look, look, it happens to everybody if they're lucky. <laughs> it happens to everybody if they're lucky. <laughs> It's not a selfie occasion. <laughs> Frankly, start, get over yourself and start thinking about ordinary New Zealanders. Because yeah. that's, that's who put you here. I mean, the, the fact that the ACT Party is down to one, the ACT Party is down to one member of parliament have had more money than any other political party for the time they've been here. Yeah, right. um, I, I, I know that he's, he's in serious want of some advice. Give up, get over himself. Take the personal stuff out of the media and start on policy, passion and people. He might have a chance. Yeah, yeah. A bit late, but he might have a chance. Five minutes ago. Mr Speaker, could I just say this here? What was very clear from the Prime Minister's speech and so many speeches by the National Party is they're out of touch now with ordinary New Zealanders. Not so strange, really, when you think about it, because the median wage today is not even enjoyed by 70% of the New Zealand people. A whole lot of people in this country, in their tens and now hundreds of thousands, old and young, are up against it just to get by. That is a tragedy for a country that used to be a world leader, that used to be able to claim, like no other country, a greater disbursement of wealth and egalitarian equality and performance, social and economic delivery, than any other country on earth. But now it's doggy dog, everybody for himself and under the National Party, if we can get enough money to sell our propaganda, we'll try and fool the people one more time. Well, we've got a message for the ACT Party, the National Party, and their cohorts of the Māori Party over there, that they better enjoy it for a little bit longer, because they're not going to make the next election, that's for certain. They're not going to make the next election, that's for certain. And in the next few months, and if it takes a year or a bit longer, there's one party, and its party's name is New Zealand First, and we're going to go out there and turn this country's politics upside down. Right. Like we did in Northland. That's right. That's like we're going to do in March on the flag. Yeah, yeah. When we prove how out of touch this Prime Minister really was. Prepare to spend 26 million on what about treaty settlements? I tell you what we'll do for the Maori people. I tell you what we'll do for the Maori people. We'll stay with housing, with health, with education and first world wages. And we'll leave treaty settlements to the Maori party and those academics who are having a most rich, wealthy, affluent life on the back of their own people's numbers, who have forgotten about their people. Go to Morawa and ask any Māori up there, hey, what have you got out of the treaty? Go down to Ngāti Pura and ask the average Māori, what have you got out of the treaty? And so here we are in a most un -Māori way, seeing Māori members of par Parliament screaming out when they hear common sense. <laughs> it won't save them. Our message, sir, as we close with this speech today, as it was in Northern by-election, and as it will be soon as the flag goes, uh, the flag option choice goes down in, 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 in March, is for the New Zealand people to hang on a little bit longer. Don't give up, because help's on its way. Yeah.